scriptures are clear. Now, Jesus makes men rich. But he doesn't make men rich by praying for them. He doesn't make men rich by the anointing. That's why when you read the New Testament, you will not find anywhere Jesus prayed for somebody and said, be rich. When you read the New Testament, you will not see where Jesus said, I release the anointing, be made rich. But it doesn't mean Jesus does not make men rich. Jesus makes men rich through his principles. And he taught his principles by himself. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 28. I will show you where Jesus made men rich. The Bible may not have recorded about those men because they were not part of his salvation agenda. But it doesn't mean he didn't make men rich. He taught men the secret of becoming prosperous. See what the Bible said. He said, why take ye thoughts for raiment? For raiment. He said, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. He said, they toy not, neither do they spin. Next verse. He said, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon, so the, the realm of wealth, Jesus is, tell, is telling you he makes his people, is a wealth greater than Solomon. He said, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Next verse. He said, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, he said, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So Jesus is teaching us to get into wealth. The first principle is the principle of faith. He said, you must trust God to provide your need. He said, that is the secret of the lilies that are more glorious than Solomon. So Jesus is teaching us that for you to be glorious and much more glorious than Solomon, you must learn not to trust your investment. Even though you invest, you must learn not to trust your connection with people. You must learn not to trust your giftings. All these things you apply. He said, but the moment you put your faith in God, the same God that sustains the lilies will sustain you. Why do men struggle? Because they trust things, not God. So Jesus makes men rich by teaching them his principles. And then he didn't stop here. He went to the second aspect. He said, wherefore, if God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, you little, O men of little faith? He said, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or where without shall we be clothed? Next verse. He said, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. He said, for your heavenly father knoweth that you have needs of these things. God is conscious of your material prosperity. He said, your heavenly father knows. He said, this is what the Gentiles pursue. Don't put your attention there. That's why in church we say, don't preach prosperity all the time. Don't put your attention. That's what the Gentiles pursue. He said, but you, principle number two. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, and all these things. What are those things? All the things the Gentiles seek. He said, it shall be added to you. So Jesus prospers men through his principles. Number one is principle of faith. Number two is the principle of seeking the kingdom. So anybody who prospers by applying faith, anybody who prospers by seeking the kingdom first, he was made prosperous by Jesus. Because he was the one who taught us this principle. And this is not all. He taught principle number three. What is principle number three? John, Luke 6, 38. I think that's the scripture. He said, give. It shall be given unto you. This is Jesus teaching people how to be rich. How can you say Jesus does not make anybody rich? Because there's no scripture where he prayed for somebody to be rich. Or there's no scripture where he used the anointing. When he shows you the secret of prosperity. Is that not making you rich? He said, give. It shall be given unto you. He said, good measure. Pressed down. And shaking together. And running over. Shall men give to thy bosom. He said, for with the same measure that you met with her, it shall be measured unto you. Now, he was teaching about judgment here. But he also applied it to other aspects of life. Prosperity inclusive. He said, when you give, 
there is a force that is released to cause men to give to you. And this is the same thing the apostles used. If you study your Bible in Acts chapter 4 from verse 34, see what the Bible said. It said, neither was there any among them that lacked. It said, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of those things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man and there was as, as, as they had needs. Now, if you read this scripture quickly, you will not get the point here. That means the apostles were following the principles of Jesus. They didn't promise people prosperity by the anointing. They promised people prosperity by the principle. So if you read this scripture, you will notice that first, when they gathered together, there were those who had lack. And there were those who didn't have lack. Now, how did those who have lack come out of lack? Because those who have gave to them. So those who had lack became wealthy because they received what they didn't labor for. That means they were trusting God and God moved those who had to give them. Are you seeing that? So the Bible didn't record here that they worked for those who had. He said those who were possessors of land sold them and brought it and distribution was made for everybody. So those who did not have, who were trusting God, who were seeking the kingdom, who were also probably giving the lead to the heart, suddenly those who had much sold what they had and brought it and they gave to them. Now, when they gave to those who lacked, who made them rich? Was it their hard work? Was it not Jesus that made them rich? Because they were trusting God in that company. They were seeking kingdom in that company. So suddenly their lack was dealt with because God moved those who had to give to them. Now, the question again is, those who had, when they sold their property and gave, what becomes of them? Why didn't they become poor? Because Jesus taught, give, it shall be given unto you. So the more they gave, the more they became bigger. Now, this thing does not have a physical justification, but it's a spiritual empowerment. Because it's God that moved men to give to those who give. And that's why Paul was teaching in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 6 to verse 10. See the way Paul puts it. He said, but I say unto you, he which sweats sparingly shall reap sparingly. He which sweat bountifully shall also read bountifully. Now, the way the apostles operated was that they begin to show you a reality from a spiritual context. Then they apply it to a physical context. He was first of all talking about sowing to the spirit and reaping life and then sowing to the flesh and reaping corruption. He now moved it that this principle is not only in the spirit. It can also apply in the physical. And so he went to verse 7 and he began to share. He said, every man he has moved from spirit to spiritual, to physical, according as he proposed in his heart. He says, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. He says, for God loved a cheerful giver. In verse 8, he says, and God is able. This is the God involvement. That's why we say God is directly involved. And when they are talking God here, know that they are referring to Christ. Because they preach Christ as the son of God. And so they preach Christ as God. He said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. May what? Abound to every good work. So the way God empowers us to advance his kingdom. Is that he responds to our giving faith. By giving us more. If you read this scripture more. Let's read some more. Verse 9. He said, as it is written. He has dispersed abroad and has given to the poor. So you know what he's talking here now? It's no longer spiritual principle. He has migrated to the physical. He said his righteousness remained forever. Next verse. He said now he that ministered seed to the sower. Both ministers bread for food and multiply your seed sown and increases your fruit of righteousness. He said being enriched in everything. To all bountifulness, which causes through causes through causes through us, thanks given to God. So as we keep giving, we keep abounding until we are overflown with thanksgiving. So when you say God does not prosper people, you are not helping them. When you say Jesus does not prosper people, you are not helping them. 
Because Jesus cannot be interested only in your spirit and in your soul. And forget about your body and your finances. Your life does not only begin and end with the wellness of your spirit and your soul. If you think it's a joke, try it. And see how poverty will mess up your destiny. Many things, visions God gives to you can never go forward except as you prosper. And see, this thing is not about church. Oh. Hope you notice as he's talking about giving, he's talking about the poor. If you read other scriptures, you see that he talks about fatherless, he talks about orphans, he talks about widows. So it's not about church. We fight it because we think, oh, it's church, church, church. It's not about church. It's a disposition of the spirit that opens up your heart for enlargement. Because the impact of giving is not just to prosper you. Your giving is an act of honor to God. And when a man honors God, the Bible said, God honors him. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. You honor God with your substance. So giving is not just about, oh Lord, prosper me. It has many deeper implications. When a man gives, it's an act of faith. It means you are telling God, I trust you as my supplier. I trust you as my source. And God responds to that faith. Because faith pleases God. Giving is also an act of responsibility and maturity. It means you have now grown. So you know that God's agenda is your primary focus. And you begin to take it upon yourself to advance God's agenda. So brothers and sisters, hear me. Work hard. The Bible admonishes it. It says if you don't work, don't eat. It says work with your hands to have so that you give. Number two, invest as much as you can. You need all the wisdom in the world to invest. Because what you sow, you reap. Number three, maximize your gift. A man's gift, make it room for him. Those are universal laws. Apply them. Number four, produce something. As much as God gives you wisdom, don't be idle. Look for something. Start up a company. Start up a business. Invent something. As much as you have the wisdom for. But never neglect the blessing. There are people in the world who don't have God, who are prospering. They don't need God, they are prospering. But hear me, they are rich, self, not prospering. Because prosperity is spirit, soul and body. Glory to God. They don't need God, but they are rich. However, don't make the mistake of thinking, God does not make men rich. He has given us too many principles to make us rich. He says if we trust Him and we function, not putting our faith in what we do, but in Him, he has a way of multiplying what we do. Those of you who trust God, have you not noticed that what you spend in a month is bigger than your salary? Do you know where the rest come from? Because when you trust God, God now multiplies what you have. So while you are yet applying the universal principle, put your trust in God. Number two, as you are doing what you are doing, keep seeking God. Because when you seek God, He prospers you. He said, your prosperity becomes an addition and then number three as much as it's within your power give he say in the morning sow thy seed in the evening withhold not thy hand he say give a portion to seven give a portion to eight you don't know the evil that comes upon the earth you know the way Paul puts it he say my God shall supply all your needs not according to your investment he say according to his riches and it's not in the context where you sow he say in glory so the riches come from glory through Christ Jesus. So hear me. You must be careful to have a balance in your understanding. Because you can throw away something that has blessed many generations before you came. They are called ancient landmarks. There are some of you here, you have lost your faith. Because you heard somebody say, if you like, don't walk and see if you will not die of poverty. And so you put all your confidence on your job. And then when you are just about to be promoted, that's when they gave you sack later. And that is, it's in that junction, you now start trying to seek God. You are running from one prayer house to another. If you knew what Jesus taught, while you were walking, your faith would have been in God. Walk and be your best, but trust God on that job. So that in case you see a sack later, it will not be you being fired. It will be the company being fired. Because you are not sustained by that company, you are adding value to that company. While you are walking, be seeking God. They told most of you, look at you. In Africa, you're always praying. Go to China. People are walking. And you can no longer do God's job. They say, so when you say, no, I, I, I'm going for an, a, a, a conference. And they kill 
the passion to see God because they were using China as a reference. How many of them are going to heaven? And the people calling China, China. Do you know how many gods are in China? Oh, look at India. They are working. They are companies. Do you know how many gods are in India? Do you know the gods they worship? You are seeing company. Do you know the shrines they enter? Hey, look at America. They are prospering. Go and study the history of America. And look at what the founding fathers knew. You came from a dark heritage. Where all your ancestors were worshippers of idol. You are saying America, they are company. This is a nation that has a, uni a slogan. In God we trust. Is, 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 is it, who put it there? Does it not suggest to you that this is a nation that has its foundation in God? The people you are seeing now are enjoying the heritage of the patriarchs. You come from a nation of idol worshippers. You are saying, look at America. They are in companies, they are working. They don't have understanding. Don't talk to people who are shallow. Go and check their currency. In God we trust. They put it on their money. Is that not on the dollar? In God we trust. And you are here. You say company, company. You don't know nothing about America. And that you are living there does not mean you know there. You went four years ago. You think you know anything about the country. What have you read about the nation? Hey, hey. hey they, they are just praying. Praying in Nigeria. Do you know how many years this man served God? Go and check the chapter of these nations. And see what the values of these nations are built on. If you enter the, 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 the U.S. Parliament... If you stand where they, they, at the, at the, the platform in front there, is the statue of Moses that is in front of you. You look straight. You see Moses, Moses, the Moses of the Bible. That's, that's the figure that they look upon to lead their parliament. Who is Moses? He was the one who taught Israel laws and status. That's why the American parliament has the image of Moses there to remind them that they are sustaining the government of heaven. And you, you are here, you are telling America, America. What do you know about America? Nations that have foundation in God are prospering because of those foundations. There is no nation on earth that gives more than Americans. Ask anybody who is in a business or in a ministry or in a company. Anything you are doing, if an American believes in it, before you ask, he starts sponsoring it. They give as if they are mad. Because they believe things and they know how things work. And that's the nation you are here. You are saying, hey, hey they, 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 all the Western nation, they are working. Hey, we, we are praying. We have not dug our word. That's why we are praying. We are still learning to trust God. We are still learning to seek God. We are still learning to give. We don't know it. If you like, vomit your heart to a Nigerian. He won't give you nothing. He doesn't know it. But meet an American on the street. If he understands your vision, he doesn't need to know you. He will just support you. All of this disaster that happened, how do you think this nation succeed? If there is a disaster, maybe people's houses are burned. Before you wake up, some people will, 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 will take leave of absence from work and come to area where there is disaster and they will walk there for four days. They will bring clothes, they will bring food from nowhere. They don't need to know you. They don't need your thank you. The principle is natural to them. What we are teaching in church today that we are fighting is natural to those nations. And here they say, give, you are arguing, you are arguing. <laughs> we don't know what makes men. And we are, we are talking things that we don't understand. All the billionaires you are calling, that they don't need God, go and check how much they have given for charity. You'll be shocked that you don't know what you are saying. God wants all of us to be blessed. But we must know how it works. And Jesus taught us three principles. He said the lilies don't work. It's not encouraging you not to work. But it's telling you that even the lilies that don't work, they don't worry themselves. And he said if you trust God, he will bless you the way he blesses the lilies. And he said the lilies are so blessed that they have more glory than Solomon. To give you an idea of how God increases men that trust him. Number two, he says seek Ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said, All these things shall be added to you. That means if you seek God and seek to live right, God prospers you. And number three, he said, Give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. There is a dimension of wealth that God is about to bring his children into so that they can advance his kingdom and so that they can live a fulfilled life. But there is a principle. 
Lift your hands toward heaven. I want to make a declaration over you. Yeshua. 